Today is Wednesday, July 3rd. We're bringing the latest track of a historic hurricane and a heat wave set to roast parts of the U.S. this holiday weekend. Also, Democratic lawmakers are raising concerns about President Biden's re-election campaign. But are donors equally worried? Plus, a new national standard could help protect American workers from extreme heat. Prices are changing for Fourth of July staples like cookouts and fireworks. And we'll preview the most popular eating contest of the year. Those stories and even more news to know in today's episode. Welcome, welcome to The Newsworthy. All the day's news in around 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. A record-setting powerful storm is making its way north with millions more people in its path. Hurricane Barrel has weakened slightly since it first made landfall in Granada. But it's still a major Category 4 hurricane with life-threatening winds and storm surge. And today, it could hit Jamaica directly or pass nearby. Either way, officials have been warning people to seek higher, safer ground in Jamaica, Haiti, and the Dominican Republic. Next up, the hurricane is forecast to approach the Cayman Islands tomorrow before reaching Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula by Friday. Eventually, the effects of barrel could reach the continental U.S. early next week with some minor coastal flooding in southeast Texas or southwest Louisiana. Meanwhile, millions of Americans are dealing with another intense heat wave. The National Weather Service has issued excessive heat warnings, advisories, and watches for much of California that are set to last through Monday. The forecast is calling for temperatures at or above 110 degrees for Sacramento and Fresno into the weekend. And even some coastal areas are expected to get well into the 90s. And it's not just the Golden State. The intense heat and wildfire threat will extend from Washington State to Arizona, with records expected to be broken. Dangerously high temperatures are impacting other parts of the world, too. In fact, a heat wave may be partly to blame for a tragedy in India this week. Thousands of people gathered for a Hindu religious event when local officials say heat and overcrowding sparked a panic with people struggling to escape a makeshift tent. And that set off a stampede. At least 116 people died, mostly women and children. India has a history of stampedes at religious gatherings, often because safety measures are not strongly enforced. An investigation into this latest incident is underway, with many already calling for officials to be held accountable. The U.S. is putting together one of the largest Ukraine aid packages it's sent since the start of Russia's invasion. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin previewed it yesterday, saying the U.S. will soon announce the package worth more than $2.3 billion. He says it will include a lot more equipment Ukraine needs to defend itself. This is just the latest package the U.S. has planned since Congress approved nearly $61 billion in Ukraine aid earlier this year. It also comes just weeks after the U.S. and Ukraine signed a long-term bilateral security pact. Remember, it commits the U.S. to 10 years of training Ukraine's armed forces, providing military assistance, and increasing intelligence sharing. Former New York Mayor Rudy Giuliani is no longer allowed to practice law in his home state. He was disbarred by a state court that found he lied in arguing the 2020 presidential election was stolen. The court said when Giuliani was former President Trump's personal lawyer, he, quote, baselessly attacked and undermined the integrity of this country's electoral process. Giuliani argued that he believed the statements he said at the time he was making them. But the court was not persuaded, saying as a lawyer, he should have known better. Now, Giuliani's spokesperson says the former mayor plans to appeal the decision, calling it politically and ideologically corrupted. Meanwhile, he's also facing discipline in Washington, where an ethics panel has recommended he be disbarred there, too. To be continued. (music) President Biden is still facing a growing revolt in the aftermath of the first presidential debate. And this week, the first sitting Democratic member of Congress publicly called on Biden to withdraw. Congressman Lloyd Doggett explained that he doesn't want to take away from all that President Biden has achieved, but said the 81-year-old president might not be the strongest Democratic candidate to take on former President Trump in November. Other prominent Dems are expressing similar concerns, like former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, who said yesterday it was legitimate to ask if Biden's debate performance was the result of a condition. For now, though, Biden's campaign insists he is not dropping out, that even though the debate did not showcase the best of his abilities, that the president knows how to do the job. In the coming days, he plans to meet with congressional leaders and Democratic governors, hoping to ease their concerns. Meanwhile, Biden's re-election campaign is still raking in the money. In fact, it raised $127 million last month, topping Trump's $112 million. That said, former President Trump outraised Biden in both April and May. 
and now Trump has more cash on hand. Still, things could change. There are now four months to go before Election Day. We have much more news for you coming up, but first, this episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. We've all heard the saying, comparison is the thief of joy, right? But with social media, it can be hard not to compare when everyone's posting the highlights of their lives. Whether it's on social media or in real life, if you've ever found yourself wishing your life looked like someone else's, therapy can help you focus on what you want instead of what others have so you can actually start living your best life. In fact, whatever mindset shift I need in any given moment, therapy has given me the strategies to first recognize what's actually going on and then respond to it in the best way for that moment. If you're thinking of starting therapy, BetterHelp is a great place to start. It's online, so it's convenient and flexible, and it makes it really simple to switch therapists if you need, so you can find the best match for you, no awkward conversations required, and no additional charge. So stop comparing and start focusing with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Newsworthy today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash Newsworthy. Now back to the news. As expected, the FDA approved a new treatment for early Alzheimer's disease. The new drug is called Donanumab. You may remember we told you about it last month when a panel of experts unanimously recommended it. In trials, donanumab was shown to have benefits, slowing cognitive decline, at least modestly, in patients in the early stage of Alzheimer's. They did also determine the drug comes with serious safety risks, like swelling and bleeding in the brain. But the FDA still decided the benefits outweigh the risks. Donanumab is similar to rival drug Lakembi. But one key difference is patients can actually stop taking donanumab once brain scans show enough progress. So that might save patients money though it is still expensive. A year's worth of treatment is set to cost $32,000, slightly higher than Lakembi, which goes for nearly $27,000 a year. Some insurance plans do partially cover it, but many do not, saying this kind of treatment is still experimental. At this point, Alzheimer's still has no cure and affects about 6.5 million Americans. A new merger could end up transforming the media industry. Reports say Skydance has reached a preliminary deal to merge with Paramount. Skydance is an up-and-coming movie studio that helped produce the latest Top Gun movie. And Paramount is the parent company of CBS, MTV, and Nickelodeon. So together, they could become a Hollywood giant. First, though, a special committee of Paramount board members will have to approve the deal. And The Wall Street Journal says other bidders can still make offers to buy up Paramount themselves. So far, the companies have not yet commented, but reports say the deal could be worth $6 billion. It's now been two weeks since a cyber attack took down a software company that powers thousands of auto dealerships around the country. And still, most car dealers are struggling to sell cars. Remember, hackers took down CDK's sales and client management software tools in what the company is calling a ransom event. It's not clear whether CDK paid the group behind the cyber attack, But it now says all dealers should be back online by tomorrow. Still, a lot of damage has already been done. New data shows dealers have already lost more than $600 million because of the cyber attack, and the losses are still adding up. That said, J.D. Power and Global Data believe sales could rebound this month if operations are actually fully restored by tomorrow. Americans are preparing for tomorrow's 4th of July holiday, complete with parades, fireworks, and cookouts. But with that, they're noticing celebrations are pretty expensive, especially the food. The U.S. Farm Bureau says a 4th of July cookout will cost 5% more this year than last year. But of course, it depends on what you cook. Prices for beef, beer, and soda are up right now, but chicken and cheese prices are actually down. Another 4th of July staple that's getting cheaper? Fireworks. The American Pyrotechnics Association says the average cost of fireworks is between 5 and 10% lower this year as compared to last year. And with that, more people than ever are expected to shoot them off. Of course, you'll want to check the laws where you live, since in some places they're banned for the public and can only be handled by professionals. Competitors from around the world are on their way to Coney Island for another 4th of July tradition, the Nathan's Famous Hot Dog Eating Contest. And some new faces will have a chance at winning this year, since the reigning champion, Joey Chestnut, was disqualified for striking a deal with Impossible Foods. Some fans were holding out hope for a last-minute breakthrough, but the roster came out earlier this week and Chestnut was not on it. Instead, there were the names of 15 other men and 14 women who will devour as many hot dogs and buns as possible in 10 minutes. Winners on both the men's and women's side will get $10,000 each in prize money. As for Joey Chestnut, he is actually going to be appearing in a different hot dog eating contest tomorrow, 
at Fort Bliss in Texas. He'll be trying to eat more hot dogs than four service members combined. Then Chestnut will take on former champion Takeru Kobayashi in a separate contest that will air on Netflix this Labor Day. Well, that's it for the main news today. So now it's time for Work Wednesday, when we break down one interesting career or work-related news story every Wednesday. But first, thanks to our sponsor, Honey Love. Ever since becoming a mom, comfort means even more to me. I need to be able to run around with my son. And frankly, mom or not, no one wants to be tugging at their clothes, constantly adjusting. And I also still want to feel like my stylish adult self. Honey Love has revolutionized everything from leggings and tanks to shapewear and bras. For example, I basically live in Honey Love's Legging 2.0. The fabric is super soft, stretchy, and breathable. The side pockets are super convenient. And the shaping panels give me the support and the look that I want. And whenever I need to wear a dress to a special event, the old shapewear that rides up is not going to be my first pick. Instead, Honey Love has changed the game. Honey Love is not just supporting women, it's empowering women. Treat yourself to the best bras, leggings, shapewear, and more, and save 20% at honeylove.com slash newsworthy. Use our exclusive link to get 20% off honeylove.com slash newsworthy to find your perfect fit. After your purchase, they'll ask you where you heard about them, so please support our show and tell them we sent you. You deserve this. Free the pain and discomfort. Keep the support with Honey Love. Okay, now back to Work Wednesday. So this week, the U.S. Labor Department unveiled what could end up being the first federal safety standard for protecting workers from extreme heat. The rules would require employers to provide water when the heat index climbs above 80 degrees. They would also have to give workers access to shade or air-conditioned break rooms. If the heat index surpasses 90 degrees, employers would need to offer 15-minute paid rest breaks every two hours. And companies would have to develop plans to prevent heat-related injuries like monitoring for heat stroke symptoms. President Biden says this would impact tens of millions of people, from farm workers to construction workers, postal workers, manufacturing workers, and so on. Some states like California and Colorado already have their own heat-related workplace rules. But others, like Florida and Texas, have laws that actually ban local governments from passing heat-related protections like these. Opponents cite the costs, saying the regulation could set businesses back thousands of dollars per company per year. And if the new federal rule becomes final, it could be challenged in court. For now, though, it will have to go through a public comment period before moving forward. Well, thank you so much for joining us today and for sharing the show. A quick note, there will not be a new episode tomorrow as our team celebrates the 4th of July holiday. But we'll be back in your feed on Friday with a special episode. We'll be explaining more about the latest major Supreme Court decision that involves presidential immunity and how it impacts criminal cases against former President Trump. We'll also have an episode for you out Saturday with why Americans aren't just disagreeing with each other, they also often dislike each other, and what we can do about it. For now, thanks again for listening and have a great 4th of July holiday. 